The Family, The Home Conference 2023. Theme, Adorning the Hidden Man in the Family. Welcome to the Grace Life Kami Podcast. This conference avails us of the knowledge of God's plan, purpose, and character for us and our families, and also helps us understand that God is interested in our actions and lifestyles. The family of the new creation is ordained to follow the order of the finished work of Christ. The spirit and act of dominating and controlling are not a part of the marriage family template in the Garden of Eden. This conference has been carefully designed to suit both the single and married. Beloved, listen to this session to get these and much more from the scriptures. Jesus is Lord. Um, God's faithfulness for seeing us through uh, the past six editions we've had on the Family the Home series um, conference for the year 2023. And our key scripture remains 1 Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. Uh, I think the journey has been so great. We've been on, um, we've been running from verse 1 and now we're in uh, verse 3 and verse 4. Uh, praise God. Um, so before we proceed into today's session, let's have a word of prayer. Sweet Holy Spirit, we bless and appreciate you. Thank you for another time, another opportunity to fellowship in your world and get great insight from your word. We ask that you teach us to, in this meeting, we ask for understanding, we ask for clarity, we ask for the lessons we need to make our homes better and to make them align to your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, so um, last week, oh, last um, session we had, we began looking at the, you know, the scripture that says, um, verse 3, it says, um, your adornment must not be merely external. Okay, and we started looking at the word external, which simply means um, being superficial or being carnal or being... Um, um uh fleshy okay as as a as a christian family same individual you know all right so we we looked at two critical points as um disadvantage as disadvantages of being um superficial as a family and the first one was that the superficial family can be easily bewitched the superficial family can be easily bewitched which uh we we consider the case study of um, Eve, praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, we looked extent- extensively into how she was bewitched. And um, the root cause was because she was um, superficial. She became superficial, uh, praise God. Hallelujah. And then the second point was the fact that um, uh, the superficial family will easily fade away because um, carnality or su- being superficial boosts emptiness, praise God. Hallelujah. Um, Okay, so today we move over to the next point on the disadvantages of being superficial as a family or as an, in, as an individual, as a believer. Uh, it's that uh, being superficial, being carnal, uh, will always lead us to suffer lack of peace and, um, and lack of life, you know, as we should. Because Christ Jesus has brought us life and life abundantly. Yeah. But when we begin to discover that in some areas of our life we are lacking life as we should enjoy life, um, then we begin. We need to look inwards. Begin to. We need to look around and see areas where we have been suffering, uh, being superficial. So I don't know if you want to say something about that. Or use that we have a scripture from um, Romans chapter eight and verse six to seven, which says, "For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace." And verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The International Standard Version says, to focus our minds on the human nature leads to death. But to focus our minds on spirit leads to life and peace. So it brings it more, you know, it drags it more uh, uh, better for us than the King James Version. And then the easy English says, people who do who let their human thoughts rule them will die. This even brings it down to thoughts, not just your actions or the things uh, you know around you, but things even within you, your thoughts, your soul, your mind. It says, but people who think about what God's spirit wants will live. They will live because they are God's friends. They will be without trouble inside themselves so this trouble 
it's even from within and you know trouble from within is it's a serious trouble eh? yeah yeah <laughs> you know um one thing about um being superficial um as a family you know and more often than not i think you need to i was talking with somebody yesterday and he was like you know i don't I need them to do a job for me and i and he told me the price and i was like oh that's too high and he said no you're a married man the money is not big for a married man i'm like wow uh, I'm a married man. Does that mean that the married man said, ah, for you to do to, for you to do wedding, you should have money? I said, but I married 13 years ago, and I was like, ah, that time you married, the money was still big, and I was like, oh, so what's a big deal in you know getting married? And it, uh, and I was like, you know, what you just need to pay the dowry and then meet the pass of life. And he asked me, said, and there's any girl who has said that? Just and just just to pay dowry and pay then dowry and go before the pastor. go before the pastor and the pastor blesses you. He said, you, you, you said the lady who has said that. And it drove him a point to me because it began to make me understand that over the over the days and over the years, um, even Christians have become more superficial, mm. more superficial. And you look at a lot of young chaps and they say they want to get married. It's not like, you know, they don't want to get married. But when you look at the cumbersome nature of the weddings, I remember I was watching a, 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 a program and it was uh, winning some cash. And they asked the lady, I think it was about a million dollars. They asked her, if you get this one million dollars, what will you use it for? She said, use it for a dream wedding. I was like, wow, what, what a misplaced priority. Mm-hmm. I'll get a million dollars and I'll use it for my dream wedding. wedding. Wow, wow. Visionless, focusless. And these are the reasons why we discovered that this superficial, um, mindset is the reason why we discover that a lot of families are lacking peace and they are lacking life and even before we even get into the family a lot of young people who are supposed to you know by now so are supposed to have settled and gotten married mm. they're lacking peace and they're lacking life to do this because it's all messed up in their mindset mm. you know it's all superficial um like like somebody once said he said those days it used to be easy to get married and difficult to divorce mm. but nowadays is difficult to get married and easy to divorce mm. you spend so much in the wedding and then just at the snap of a finger we get divorced why because over the years you know couples have become more superficial than being spiritual mm. and you discover that it takes away their peace it takes away their life the sense of life is lost because the purpose for living is gone. They don't really know the purpose for, you know, why do we get into marriage? Um, over the years, I came to understand, Lord began to make us understand that you don't marry for emotions, you marry for purpose. Mm. You know, you don't marry for things, you don't marry for, in fact, basically all the, many of the reasons why we have been told we get married um, are just the secondary reasons for marriage. Marriage is based on purpose. Mm. And when purpose is not brought into the picture, it's called a lot of superficial things are brought on the table. Mm. And when the guy brings a lot of superficial reasons for getting married, the lady brings a lot of superficial reasons for getting married, they live a very they have a superficial um, courtship. And when they get into marriage, it becomes a superficial marriage. So everything is just all messed up. Then you wonder why there's no life in the marriage. And exactly, and why there's no peace in the marriage. Mm. You know, um, um, a man of God said, um, of, it was Young Chu. he said, his members came to meet him once and they were married and they told him, okay, they called him to their house and if he, said, he said, when you get into the house, it's a mansion. The guy was a big time businessman succeeding in his business. The wife was also a professional succeeding in her profession and she think that this is the best home you could ever have. You know, they were just, when you enter there, you would, it, it, it would be the dream house of anybody. You would love what you see. It was beautiful. So by the time he entered in, he saw the wife one corner of the house, he saw the husband one corner of the house. And by the time he came in, two of them came to meet him and they told him, okay, you know, you blessed us, you wedded us. You joined us in marriage. Come and say, so we want you to come and separate us. We want to divorce. So come separate us. And he was like, this is the devil. He shouted, this is the devil. He said, immediately he started binding and casting. What are we trying to say? He said, but if, as he said, they're binding and casting. Both of them said, okay, before you start binding and casting, Pastor, wait. He said, the man told him his whole story. When he said his story, his story was very right. All the man was saying was just absolutely right. Then the woman told her his own story. When she was telling her his story, all she was saying was very right, absolutely right. And then both of them were in their rights. Mm. And so they had the right to divorce. 
and then he started binding the devil at work there because he discovered that both of them were so superficial mm. they were so carnal and that was what was bringing lack of peace in the family and it was taking the life from the family he said when you enter the house was so beautiful but you could smell death mm. it was just dead and empty and it's not about the beauty of the home of the house it's not about the edifice, it's not about every other, it's not about the cars and every other, but it's about the life. The life. Yeah. And when the family is superficial, when the husband has a superficial perspective towards life, the wife has a superficial perspective towards life, you discover that you see death reigning amongst them, mm. even in the children. Mm. And you see, there will be no peace. We have a lot of plastic families today. It was the built the built on a superficial foundation. Um, many of the many of them, their dreams, their visions, their ambitions were so superficial that there was no place for the spiritual. Mm. The actual fact is that you know the spiritual is to determine our dreams, is to determine our visions, to determine our aspirations. When we are spiritually minded, it will align our dreams, our vision, and aspirations. Yeah. You know, some of the times maybe we think that okay, this is the line of career we have to take mm. but by the spirit we actually know that that is not actually the line of career we yeah. have to take yeah. you know um i remember before i got married i wanted to be to pursue a particular line of you know career i was writing exams in that line but as i began to grow in you know in the work my work with the lord in the ministry my focus began to change and I began to understand that that is not actually what I meant to be doing. But if I stayed on the superficial platform, some people end up, you know, they pursue that dream, they pursue that vision, and at the end of the day, it, it comes at the expense of the peace of the family. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I also remembered, you know, uh, when after leaving my job, yeah. then I focused, uh, came full time into the ministry, and then we got to, you know, those times when it looks like there's nothing to fall back on. And I remember one of those days you said, uh, are you sure you know go, go and get a job? Are you sure you know go and get a job? So I was like, okay, yeah, because of this condition, okay. Okay, but what kind of job can I get that will allow me time for ministry? Allow me time for the family? Because the job I left, of course, I couldn't do ministry with that kind of job. I couldn't, I could barely do my family with it too. Yeah. So I was like, what kind of job, what kind of job? And we looked around, we looked around and I said, no. And you say, okay, even if it means you go, then I come and, I come and, uh, oh, you said, okay, even if, it's, even if it's, I travel, and then when I have holiday, I come back, and I was like, at this point of this marriage, at this point of this ministry work, you want me to go, and I said, no, this is not God speaking, you know? Sometimes, even uh, before you know it, the superficial want to, you know, um, suffocate you focusing on what God has in store for you. Yeah. But it takes the spirit of God to make you remain on, on you know, on track and not allow the superficial take you off track. And then otherwise, it will take life away from it will take life away from from the family. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. peace, and peace, and peace, and peace. And peace. Um, because um, the, the the primary focus is um, life and peace, um, not actually the. The um, finances, the let me use the word the achievement. Mm. The actual fact is that when life and peace are in place, the the achievements will come. Mm -hmm. One thing I've also learned about life is that everything will come in its right time. Everything will fall in place, but we have to get the basics and the fundamentals in place. Mm. You know, and over the years, you discover that a lot of families when they get started off, they pursue the superficial, they pursue the, let me use the, word, the achievements. I remember a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, we met once, then, you know, um, I had a car that I did not have. So his car, he felt that his car was not representing. And we were talking once. In fact, when he actually got married, when I went to visit him in his house, there was no settee in his parlor. There was no furniture. The parlor was just bare, mm. you know? So I came and I was first, I was impressed. He got married the same year with me. We were young chaps, we got married in our twenties. You know, we got married the same year. Um, and I was impressed to see that man, my, my friend and my brother can take such a bold step. A bold step. <laughs> when I went to meet uh, my mom and I told her, see my friend are taking such a bold step. My mom was like, ah, oh, 
she had a comment that she made, you know, and he had no furniture in his house. So I came and out of, you know, a, a serious compassion, I prayed my heart for him that day. By the grace of God, the next time I went to his house, it was his um, naming ceremony for the first child. There was furniture in the parlor. The house was set in. And, you know, and then after a while, he met me and was like, we were talking and I was like, you know, when you try to be the best of efficient and economical with the finances you have, you buy the kind of car you can afford, and at the end of the day, it packs you on the road. <laughs> you have to start pushing the car. You have to start, you know, and when he was telling me, and he was really feeling bad. And I told him, I said, my brother, relieve this thing you are talking, no. Mm. See, I've understood what, and I told him Genesis about 24, verse 1. That has been my major focus on, you know, Life. Or life. Mm. And Genesis 24, verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Mm. Now, the promise of the blessing came in Genesis chapter 12. Mm. 12 chapters after, if you read from 12 to, to 24, man, you see a lot of things. Mm. A lot of, man, there were a lot of twists and turns. The hard guy issue came up. Uh, there were many, many things that came up. 12 to 24 was not child's play. Mm -hmm. 12 to 24 was about 30 years of twist and turns. It was, it was a torturous experience. Missing all the kings. Missing the kings. And, and almost, almost losing his wife. Almost losing his wife. <laughs> you know, plenty, plenty things transpired between chapter 12 to chapter 24. Mm -hmm. But by 24, the Bible says the Lord had blessed Abraham in yes. all things. And I told him, my brother, what is most important is that at the end of your life, you look back and you know that God has blessed you mm. in all things. I say for some people, when they start, it is car that we have, it is house that we have. As at that time, I think, you know, the Lord has blessed us with our own house. I was having a car, you know, and we was still renting. I say, why for some people, when they start, it is children they have, mm. plenty children. And I told him, what matters is that God is blessing with something when you start. Mm. I said, by the end of the day, when you look at, look back, you discover that God would have blessed you in all things. Mm. Some people, it is at um, retirement, they get their house. Yeah. But by that retirement, you discover that God has blessed them with children that have graduated from school, mm -hmm. children already uh, married you well, and they get their, their own house that they are enjoying and living their life and thankful to God. Mm -hmm. And you are good to go. And I told him, that is what your focus should be. And he felt so relaxed. He felt so comforted when I told him that. Why? Because these superficials are really eating deep and destroying families. Yeah. The peace of the family is lost. The life of the family is lost because you feel that, okay, I'm meant to be driving this kind of car um, one year into marriage. I'm meant to be living in this kind of house three months into marriage. But at the end of the day, it's all, you know, confusion of faces. Mm. What matters the most is that God blesses us in all things at the end of you know our journey that's what we should focus on that's what we should put our you know our focus on that's why you see uh, canal to be carnally minded is dead why because it makes you very superficial yeah. it makes you chase shadows mm. in families you know they chase shadows they chase you know some of the times i look at I, I was talking with my wife and i was like there's somebody who we sent a message to us you have a third child now and you know they're all dressing look and i asked my wife has this guy built a house? I am very sure he hasn't built a house. They'll be renting the best of houses they can rent, um, driving the best of cars they can drive. I also asked about the particular one. They're always snapping pictures of their children, snapping pictures. And I told her, I said, this man, he was, has he built a house? The last we spoke, he was being tossed here and there. He hasn't built a house. I asked, has he built a house of his own? Why do I keep on saying stuff like that? Because you discover that a lot of, especially in our time, our generation. Our generation, I'm telling you, I, I don't know, I pray for the next generation. Because with what is going on in our generation, I, I don't know, only God will help the next generation. Because we are crazy superficial. Yeah. Crazy superficial. Crazy superficial. What 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 we wear, what our children what will, wear, exactly. Uh, others, uh, like um, when our kids were attending that uh, Montessori, yeah. they see it's more like a competition celebrating birthdays. Exactly. You know, then I remember <laughs> there's this family that, oh God, even the proprietors always sings the way they, they owe, you know, they don't pay fees. They don't pay fees, yeah. And yeah, it's, and it's kind of, 
um, I always was uh, embarrassing. Okay, so yeah, they pastors. So, minister. so minister. it was more like they always complain the, the church does not pay their salaries or the, the salaries the church is paying them is so small and say they have three kids and all that. So more like they are trying to buy her sympathy. Yeah. But you see this people when it's time for children birthday, hey, they go for the kids. They go for the kids. They go for the drinks. Everything. And you just want to compete with those that have it all set and yeah. are paying their bills. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. You know. It's just a show of being superficial as a family. Yeah. And I, I, I remember them. They, some of them, she even tells us, Bright Shares tells us, they not even bought their school books for the children. Mm-hmm. The basic necessity of she was like, even the feed, the food. Children, they, 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 they are food. Their lunch. Their lunch. Say so sometimes she has to buy, get them lunch. You know, so many, many, but you see them, they are so superficial. They must do the birthday for the mm-hmm. children. They will do birthday at the expense of school fees. Who bet at the expense of children? Books. Drive a car. Drive a car. At the expense, at the expense of school fees. You know, and, and these were ministers of the gospel. Mm. And when I look at this, I'm like, what's what's all what's happening? So I, I remember when um there was a time that it looked as if um driving a car was it was not going to be possible. It was taking peace away from us. Yeah. You know, and the person that was trying to squeeze peace out of the family for us, I looked at him, I said, I said, this man had, had a goal. So yeah. I told my husband, I said, today we are going to drop this car. And he was surprised. We came and we said we are dropping the car. He said, and what of the kids? It's not easy to take the kids from school and then come and run. I said, no. My kids know how to check. My kids know how to take transport. So don't worry. Take your car. He was so surprised with the way we... And we, I think we, we worked for close to three months or four months yeah, yeah. before God gave us something else. Yeah. So, I mean, we shouldn't let the superficials rule us. Exactly. Otherwise, we'll keep losing peace and life in the family. Exactly. And, and you know, um, compute up with the with the plastic generation we live in, the fake generation we live in, you know, we discover that people out there, I remember I was talking with someone and he was like, ah, he said, daddy, don't mind them, we, they will snap house. The picture they are snapping is not their house. Not their house. It's not their house. So, <laughs> he said, the car they are even snapping, it's, it's not their car. Who. It's all a fake life. Yeah. And what pains us the most is that, Christians are falling prey for this. Mm. They are falling prey for this and it's getting more dangerous. We discover that the Christians will allow the world um, fine-tune their way of living. Carnal mentality is dangerous for every family. Mm. Human thoughts. Human thoughts. Think like you know, the world. Thinking like the world. And the Bible clearly says it's competing, competing with the world. With the, you know, one of the problems now we're having that we are even competing with the, world. with the world. Christians are competing with the world now. So, yeah. so a worldly singer has private jets, he has um, wristwatches and the rest of it. And then even a gospel singer wants to do him. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's part of this. Yeah. And it's clearly stated that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm. And um, there are two words that um, that strike um, the chord here. First is enmity. Mm. And then against is a double emphasis. Mm. When somebody is against you, it's already your enemy. Your friend cannot be for you. Yes. You know, Gideon, um, um, Joshua asked um, the, um, the, the angel, he said, are you for us or are oh, you yes. against us? So somebody is for you, is your friend. Mm. Somebody is against you, is your enemy. But now he says the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's a double emphasis. Mm. So being superficial, you actually as a Christian Except put against yourself against, against God, God and, and make yourself an enemy mm. to God. Mm. Now, Jesus told his disciples, he said, mm. I no longer call you um, um, servants. I call you friends. Mm. The relationship, that was his climaxing of his discipleship to them. The climaxing of discipleship is that you move from being, as it were, a servant mentee to a friend mentee. Mm. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, the hallmark of our relationship with God, when we get born again, Jesus becomes our friend. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, a, that's the principle. It's the principle of friendship. Now, so we are, we are friends of God by new birth. Mm. But now, when we choose to become carnal in our mind as children of God, we have chosen to shift stance mm. from our spiritual identity and we are giving ourselves a wrong the identity. Fallen, the fallen, the fallen identity. And that is what we are making ourselves 
enemies against God. So um, the Bible says one of the basic principles I believe in. Um, Paul said he said having food and raiment being sufficient. I believe in that principle a lot. Having food and raiment being sufficient. Um, I, I yes, I love luxuries. I love the plenty things. No, I, but, I don't love luxuries, yeah. but, but I love good things. I love good things. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, but. I have worked with that principle of having food and remain because if that principle does not stand, especially I was God's actually speaking to even minister the gospel. If that principle does not stand, you will know where you shift from being a friend of God to becoming what? An enemy of God. Mm. You don't know where you shift from being spiritual to being what? Superficial. And that's what has happened to a lot of families, a lot of Christian homes. Christian, if you look at one of the challenges in Christian, say they just got divorced. They they, 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 they they started having challenges, um, many, many, many things. They started having you know, issues. When you look at some of these things, they are not perfect. Mm. Just track it down. You discover that they got to a point where they became superficial. Mm. The husband started chasing some superficial things. The wife started chasing some superficial things. And the superficial um, rat race started separating them gradually. He started detaching them, and by, they woke up one day and they discovered that they were far apart, and the children were living in their own world. So they, when they come back home, it's husband in his world, wife in his world, children in their world, and then the home begins to experience spiritual death, trouble from inside, trouble from inside, and then everything just goes wrong. And then they're like, "Where did we get here? How did we get here?" It all because it, it, it all happened because they were superficial. I know some of the times it's difficult to make, you know, some sacrifices, to make some heavy decisions, you know, like, I, you know, my wife said. It's difficult to make some sacrifices, to make some heavy decisions. But I believe that as children of God, when God sees how much we sacrifice for us to enjoy peace mm. and life mm. in the family, He would exceed our expectations. That means to enjoy peace and life in the family is sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. We're about to save the world. You know, you, you can't be superficial mm. and enjoy peace it's and life. life in the family. Mm. It's, it's not. It's not possible. It, it's not possible. It, it can't. It, it can't just work. It's not possible. You see, one of the reasons why a lot of families are Christian families. Now, I'm talking about Christian families because you know some of the times you look at Christian families, it's that they are not uh, modeling Christ the way. Should. They, they should. I think I'm saying. You, you, you even look at some um, worldly families. I discovered that they even have more peace yeah. than the Christian family. It's because our blueprint, we leave it, and we chase the wrong things. Mm, mm, we mm. chase a lot of superficial things. At, at the end of the day, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Yes. Number one. Number two. At the end of it all, God blesses. Mm. As he did to Abraham, the Bible says, I am the Lord that blessed Abraham mm-hmm. in all things. The torturous journey will be there, but the Lord will definitely bless. Mm. But if our focus is being having the present superficial, mm. we we'll discover that we will lose out on God's ultimate blessings. And the blessing of peace and life will bring everything. I was talking with somebody and I was like, oh, in this location, um, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no hustle and bustle. You know, in the Accra, the hustle and bustle is there. That's where fulfill the money is. And he told me, I said, well, you have peace here. And he told me, yeah, you need peace for long life. <laughs> he said, you need peace for long life. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, actually, that is what, it got to a point where peace became, the Lord began to tell us like four years ago, he began to tell us we have entered into the Solomonic era mm. of our ministry. And that period, we are experiencing the troubles Everyone. on all sides. Everyone. Because the Lord had told us told before we came to Accra that we're going to, be, we're going to uh, experience the the, um, the 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 Joshua yes, experience. Right. We're going to fight battles. And right from you know Congo, I began to study the book of Joshua to understand what I was coming to do in Accra. Mm. So I studied the book of Joshua. I discovered that Joshua fought and killed thirty-one kings back to back. Mm. It was back to back battles. And as we came to Accra, as we landed there. It was back to back battles. Mm. It was battles upon battles. And I was and like, God, when did this battles? come to an end and then the lord began to tell us at the point in time that we're entering into our solomonic era 
And that was when I began to stop, teach on the Solomonic era in um, in church. And then understanding the finish work of Christ came on. Yeah. And when the Lord told us about the Solomonic era, it was the era of the Lord told us, okay, the Lord made us understand that the Davidic era was Christ. Christ was a David or Solomon. Thank you. Know what I'm saying? I said, all right. You know, so Jesus fought the battle. He won it also that we can enjoy peace. Mm. And I, I began to understand, okay, we're enjoying our Solomonic era. And then we began to pray for peace and peace and peace and peace and peace and peace and peace. And peace. <laughs> peace became a prayer point. Yeah. A serious prayer mm. point. And at a point in time, God began to remove people from around us, remove people from around us. And then the Lord now began to make us know it was time to relocate. We began to pray and ask the Lord where to relocate. But we that the major emphasis for relocation was what? Peace. So when I came here, to, when we came to this location and uh, the person began to say, yes, peaceful, you know, and there's no hustle and bustle, anybody else. Like, peace, you need peace. And I say, yes, exactly, you need peace for a long life because it was a major word the Lord has told us. More often than not, it's called our Christian families. We don't concentrate on peace and life. We concentrate on every other thing. And when we chase every other thing, we discover that we will lose peace and life. And the things we have chased, we now start using them to source, to source of peace and life at the end of the day. Somebody said something, he said, we use in our youthful aid, we use our health to chase wealth. Mm. And then as we start growing old, we start using that wealth to chase health. <laughs> and you see, Christian families have gone into this, um, let me see what this rat means, but that's not God's original plan. Mm. That's not God's original intent for the Christian family. The Christian family is meant to be spiritual. Mm. With spirituality, peace and life will be in place. Mm. And I tell you, the blessing will be manifest. Amen. We'll flourish. Amen. We'll flourish. And also, we will not make ourselves enemies of God. against God. Amen. We must ensure that we are spiritual. Mm. That is very important. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, we've judged on this and our time is fast spent. I wish we could go to the next one, but um time will not allow us to go to the next one but i i, I like um you know this very point in the easy english version of romans 8 and verse um, 6 to 7 you know people who let their human thoughts rule them so you see it's okay to have human thoughts we are we are living in this world yeah but when we begin to allow our human thoughts rule us other than the spirit of god then it says they will die yeah when you allow the human thoughts to rule you, you will die. Yeah. And we don't want to experience death in our families. Yeah. Whether it be physical or emotional or psychologically, psychologically or, or physical, you know, anyone. We don't want to experience any sort of death. So if we don't want that, we must, you know, uh, be conscious of the fact that uh, we mo uh, human thoughts should not be what is ruling us as yeah, a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So the way you are responding to your husband, the way you respond to your children, be sure that it's not based on human thoughts. Right. Human thoughts, uh, the root of human thoughts most times is our culture. Yeah, yeah. You know? So in my family, uh, women don't do this. In my family, men don't do this. Yeah. You, that's human thoughts ruling. Really. Yeah, yeah. You need to come down to it. Does the scripture approve this for me as a wife? Exactly. Does the scripture approve this for me as a husband? Exactly. Not in my family, where we come from, yeah. in my place, where we come from. Ah, uh, my friends, they don't do this. Ah, uh, my friends, I say this is not supposed to be, you know. But we begin to allow all these human thoughts begin to rule our family. Uh, it's, it snips, it snips life away. It snips life away from you. And, 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 and another thing there is. When we are very sensual. Exactly. We are very sensual. Mm -hmm. Because, um, for example, love is not an emotion. Mm. Love is not an emotion. Um, love is the very nature of God. Mm. And like always, I define love as living with the pain mm. of giving someone pain. Mm. That was what Jesus lived with on the cross. Yeah. For the hours he hung on the cross, like somebody said, it was not the nails. That, that held Jesus to the cross. It was love that held Jesus to the cross. Yes. For, from let's even before even the cross from Gethsemane, from Gethsemane, he was living with the pain mm. of giving us gain. Yes. Bible says he prayed until he began to sweat blood. Mm. When um, 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 I did a little study on that, 
he was basically hemorrhaging from his forehead. And what ha- what makes that happen is that the epidermis, which is a, uh, the layout of the, the layout of the skin we see, um, the, it, it it has just little pores, sweat pores that sweat can come out of. It's just very tiny, 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 tiny pores. And the epidermis is the, is the layer we see. The next the next layer is the dermis, you know, which is inside. And so the epidermis cannot allow anything more than sweat pores, sweat to come out because the pores are very small. Now, so for Jesus to have hemorrhage from his head, from his um, forehead, for him to have his, um, sweated out blood, it meant that the epidermis, the pores, tore. Mm. They tore. They enlarged bigger than normal. Normal. Because sweat is, um, the, the, the weight of sweat is less. Yeah. You know, it's but blood is heavy. heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. You know, so for, for blood to come out of his forehead, it meant that his epidemies, the pores in the epidemies, they tore mm. for blood to come out. And scientists, um, scientists made us understand that that was as a result of the pressure that was on his heart. Mm. Actually, Jesus died of a ruptured heart. The pressure on his heart. And from scientific research, it was told that nobody has been able to carry that kind of pressure on his heart. Mm. So people that will say, ah, BP, BP, um, I was, the BP was so high and the BP rose to 200. You have not seen carry the pressure that Jesus carried. Mm. Because if you carry that pressure, your sweat pours with tear open and blood will come out. So that was what happened to Jesus. So he his sweat pours up with blood come out, blood come out because of the pressure on his heart. And to further emphasize the pressure on his heart, no human being has ever carried out it. No human being ever carried that pressure on his heart. Yeah. When his side was pierced, what happened? Blood and water came out. Why? Because his heart ruptured due to too much pressure. And what was the pressure? The weight of the sin of humanity. And love was what propelled him to carry that weight. Mm. When his side was pierced, blood and water came out right? because his heart had ruptured into his side. The soldier saw that his side was swollen, bulging. And that's why he tried to check why it was bulging because according to the crucifixion process, nobody ever experiences that. Mm. When he checked it with his spear, pierced it, blood and water came out right? because his heart had ruptured. And scripture must be revealed. And proving of the scripture must be revealed. It ruptured because of the level, the pressure that nobody can ever carry. Mm. And what propelled that? Love. So love is not an emotion. Love is not excitement. Love, you see, when, when the world defines love to us, go to the dictionary, you define it as an emotion. It's 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 um, uh, um the, 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 the feelings, the 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 hula balloons, the tiplings, the butterflies in the tummy. You see, one of the brands that a lot of you know, even couples get um have when they get when they want to get married is that the butterflies they had in courtship. When they get married, they soon die. They the butterflies disappear. <laughs> they die. So now no butterflies again. And the man now begins to ask, how will I, how will I make her happy? Make her happy? <laughs> Since both of us are not having any butterflies again. And then the parent comes in. And because they don't understand that love is not the butterflies in the stomach. Mm. Love is living with the pain of giving someone again. Yeah. Jesus lived with that pain from Gethsemane to when he said it is finished. We will only experience, uh, uh, you see, the Bible says uh, um, um, that, uh, you know, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. And the Bible says he had, he had, he had reconciled us with God and made peace. Mm. He had made peace with God. Why? Because of love. Now, when a family is superficial, they cannot have peace because love will never reign. It's love, the love that propelled Jesus, that, 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 that made him Get, bring back peace mm. between man and God. And God. Mm. So when there's no peace in the family, mm. it is because there is no love. Mm. And why is there no love? Because they are having a superficial idea of love. Mm. Man, love is not superficial. Love is not an emotion. Love is not um, the butterflies you feel. Love is living with the pain of giving another day. Mm. Jesus lived with that pain from Gethsemane till when he said it is finished. Husbands must live with that pain. Mm. Wives must live with that pain. Children must, Children must live with that pain. Mm. But you know the beautiful thing about it? When you see the peace that comes in mm. and the life that comes in, far exceeds the sacrifice, mm. far exceeds the pain. That's why the Bible says, Jesus, knowing the glory I had mm. of okay. him, endured 
the cross, despising the shame. You see, when this is the basis of living in the family, we will not be superficial, we will be spiritual. And then love will flow naturally. Love is not romance, love is responsibility. Mm. Love is not butterflies, mm. love is being spiritual. Mm. When you are spiritual, it will flow into your natural life. Mm. And you just see that it's a natural flow. Many, many Christian families are trying to love from a physical point of view. Mm. So they give you 21 steps. 52 approaches, mm. 120 things to the different love language. The different love language, the beautiful ideas, I'm telling you. Mm. But as you start going, this what well, the love language itself. When you as a woman, you start chasing, you start chasing you, five you children. You by yourself forget your love language. You start chasing five children inside the house. I saw, I saw somebody, and I saw, you know, a, 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 something online. They put the high heel, and they said before, why you are single? Mm. Then they put the heel go to uh, lower. <laughs> where you, where you caught him. Then when you get my you chase. Where well, when you now have three children, I sleep past flat. When you start chasing many things, when when the the, the whole the whole you know sacrifice sacrifice comes, <laughs> you yourself you forget your love language. Mm. Even the man will forget his love language. Then when that becomes a ball game, you now discover that love is not. It's far beyond. It's far beyond the emotion. It's far far. It has to be from superficial. It's far from it has to be mm. strictly spiritual. Yeah. Living with the pain mm. of giving someone pain. When that becomes your lifestyle, you discover that that pain is joyful mm. because the pain becomes what peace and life. Peace and life. Wow, I I, I love today's uh, session. <laughs> well, I love what I was doing, but I love today's session. I love the landing presentation. Okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for such a great time we've had sharing fellowship. We ask that the words we have learned um, we shall be practitioners of these words in the program. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. <laughs>